Hello neighbor, Alicia Dolan here at Creating in My Corner. I am so glad that you're joining me for tonight's Stampin' Sunday card class. Um, I'm trying something different again as far as our video goes. Um, so I hope that you can see and hear me all right. While we are waiting for any friends to join us, I'd like to show you the cards that we made at the Friday night card class. So once a month, I have a card class in my home where I cut and prepare everything for um, a fun night of card making. So on Friday, we made four cards. Hi, Kim. This is the first one. So that one was really cute. And when you do come to card class, I give you a piece for the inside of every card too. So sometimes we stamp those and sometimes we stamp the envelopes to match. Sometimes we don't. But that is the first card. So there's one. And I just wanted to, to show you. Um, I was going to make these cards tonight, but I decided that we would do a create as we go class. So we're going to do something a little bit different. But here is the second card. If you are interested in making these cards, just let me know and I can um, send you the list of what we used and all the measurements to make those cards. And the Christmas ones will probably be available at my Christmas card buffet too. So next month, um, Friday night is my card class, December, I think it's the 17th, and then the 18th, I'm going to have a Christmas card buffet. So if you're interested in that, let me know. This is the second card we made. That one's the third, sorry. And, the, and then here's the fourth one. This is the last one we did on Friday night. So this is a fun fold card, which I thought was really cool. Um, and again, if you're interested in making any of these cards, let me know. And I can write down the measurements and get those to you. Okay, and then I did want to show you the cards for next month's card class real quick before we get started on tonight's cards, which I haven't designed yet. So we're going to design as we go. Um... And hopefully our cards will turn out really fun. I love the fun folds too. I'm glad you like that. I was really excited about it. Okay. So here are the cards for next month. We're doing all Christmas cards. And this is the first one. This is the second one. I'm not going to show you the insides of all of them because some of them are still blank. This is the third one. And then of course we need one more fun fold, right? So this is the last one and I thought this was really cool. Isn't that fun? Okay, so there are the cards for next month. If you're interested in that class, you can RSVP for that now. Um, I'll be sending out the email for, for tonight's cards probably by Wednesday. Um, and there will be a link in there to RSVP for next month's class too. Okay, now I need to, um, turn the camera down. So I'm going to turn the sound off for just a minute so you won't hear the, um, the phone holder squeaking around. And then I'll be right back. Okay, 
I eventually I'm gonna have to figure out exactly how to have the best setup. Um, I don't. I haven't figured it out yet, but this week I am going to be home a little bit more than normal. So, um, I'm hoping to have some time rearranging down here in my craft corner and setting everything up, hopefully in a better, um, uh, in a better system. <laughs> See, I don't even know what I, I don't even know what I need to say. I did put together some cards this afternoon to put on my card rack. I was trying to finish them up. I have a whole stack of cards over in the corner that really need to be finished and they need matching envelopes before they can go in my card rack. And remember that if you do come to card class and you bring a friend, both of you get to choose four cards uh, from my spinning card rack. So you definitely want to come and bring a friend, especially since I am filling my card rack up. So tonight we are going to work with the very cute stamp set and punch because I just got it and I, um, I'm really excited about it. Now, this paper that we're going to use tonight is called A Walk in the Forest. And in case you didn't know, this paper is part of Stampin' Up's Give Back program. And for every pack of paper that's bought, they donate $3 to Toys for Tots here in the U.S. So um, it's definitely worth it. And it's very, very cute paper. Okay, so we made a card before that had this paper on it. I could not tell you where that card is. So today I think we'll use the back side of this one. And I really wanted to use this paper with the cute bears on it. I really love these bears. Okay, so those are our two um papers that we want to use. So let me grab some, let's see. Nope, that's not quite right. Okay, we'll do Pretty Peacock. And maybe some old olive. All right. No, it doesn't have to be just Christmas. It's really cute. Um, you could use this paper anytime. So on the back of this one is little trees. I should show you the fronts and backs. This one has little trees on the front, but it has stripes on the back. Those are great. Uh, let's see, I'll show you one piece of each. This one has little trees on one side and snowflakes on the other. So these, it would make really pretty um, winter cards too. This one has, I assume that's mistletoe, but I do not know my plants that well. <laughs> and then there's some little fur, uh, fur branches on the back. Let's see what else we've got here. This one has some pretty pine cones. And those look like snowflakes. There's no snow outside yet, but I know here in Michigan it will be coming. Let's see, I've already showed you that one with the bears. This one and that one. Okay, so that that's all of them. So there's six different designs, two sheets of each, um, 12 pieces of paper. All right, 
So let's put those aside and let's uh, see what we're going to do tonight. And I was thinking really what I want to do is pull out one of the cards I've made before and we could copy it. So let's do a really simple one like this and we'll just case that. And then I was trying to look for one um, that was a bit of a fun fold. No, I don't see any here at the front. I do love fun folds, but I don't make them as much as I, probably not as much as I should. All right, let's do those two. So we'll case these cards, make something similar with our stamps and paper and ink. I hope you're feeling well, Kim. I know that um, I, I messaged you last week, but I'm sure it's taken a while. All right, so we're going to copy this one first. So first we just need a piece of cardstock, and I'm using Pretty Peacock, and we're going to cut it in half at five and a half. So if you have cards at home that you really love, you can always case them. And what case means is copy and share everything. So I find that I copy my own cards quite often. The Not always exactly, but the design or the sketch it would be. I know there are sketches out there that you can look up and copy, and that's kind of fun. A lot of the time they don't have... Um, they don't have they won't have anything on them but they'll give you the measurements for each little layer and so that's kind of fun all right and then we need a piece that's five and a quarter by four so that actually yeah that's we're gonna keep it simple I I was gonna I was going to make it too much, but I'm not, I'm going to try not to. All right. Oh no, you lost me. I hope I'm still there. I'm going to keep going just in case, because it looks, it looks like it's still going. So hopefully, oh, all right. So I'm going to turn this over. And I'm gonna add my liquid glue on the back. Now, if you've been watching for a while, you know that I love the liquid glue. Um, it's my it's my go-to glue, but I also have used more recently the stamp and seal. So the way I use the liquid glue though is I do a thin line all around the edge, and then I put a squiggle down the middle. Now there's, there is a trick to it. Okay. So see how I smooth that corner a little bit. You don't want any globs of glue anywhere. You want it to be as smooth as possible and just thin lines. So uh, let me bring that up close so you can see really well. So see how I did just a skinny line around the edge, the squiggle down the middle, and I left a little spot right here where I can grab it without getting my fingers gluey. You do not want gluey fingers. Um, you, you can fix it, but you want to try not to have gluey fingers. So then we can line that up and get it as close to centered as we can. And we'll just press it down to make sure that glue is nice and sealed. Now, when you're pressing it down, before you press it all the way, you want to make sure, that's when you want to make sure that it's all lined up. Now, I haven't had any frog in my throat all day long, but now I feel like 
I feel like I need to cough. So I'm going to try not to. And hopefully it's going to work out. Okay, now I want to show you um, these little trees. There is a die in the mini catalog that, that will go with those little trees to cut them out. But I do not have that little die. What I do have is the bear punch. Now, this bear punch is not sold with this paper, but they still coordinate. So you can take your punch. Oh, that's it needs to be a little bit higher. All right, so what I'm going to do is trim my paper a little bit here. Actually, I'm going to trim around this tree just kind of generally because I think... I'm going to use that little part of the tree, too. All right, and then I'm going to trim up here so that I can get to that bear. And I'm going to stick my punch in there. And we can line that right up. Oop, I and then I tried to get it out of there too fast. Okay. So now we punched out our little bear. Simple is good. It is. And sometimes I forget that simple is good. Okay, so here is our little bear. And we are going to cut out this little tree. So I'm just going to fussy cut it real quick. I'm not going to be too particular, but I want it to have a little edge. So I'll just go around. Sometimes I forget that simple is good. I don't know if anyone else has this problem, but I have a tendency to overcomplicate things. And not just with crafting. With crafting for sure, but also with other areas of my life. I do have a tendency to overcomplicate. All right. So here is our tree. I think that's really cute. And so, hmm, let's see. What do we want to do with that? I think that I want to put it on a piece of white. So I'm going to cut this a little bit smaller. I'm going to trim it. All right, and then I'm gonna grab some basic white cardstock, which I have right behind me. I just had to replace a whole bunch. All right, and this is, let's see, about three inches wide. So we're gonna let it be three by Let's see. I love having a ruler close by. I do need it. All right, let's do three. All right, I'm gonna start with three by four and we're gonna see how that fits. I may need to cut it down just a little bit. All right. Oh, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so there's our piece of white. That's three by four. Nope, I like that on there. And 
and then we're gonna stamp our sentiment on there. So let's, I love this right here that says warm wishes. Okay, so let's use that sentiment. And I have a little block right here, block B, that we can put our words on. And I'm gonna grab my pretty peacock ink. Actually, maybe it should be all, uh, hmm. yeah. We're just gonna use pretty peacock. I'm trying really hard, you guys, not to uh, not to question myself too much here. Like I said, I have a tendency to overcomplicate. All right, and I just got ink all over my stamp, but I think it's gonna be okay. My pretty peacock is fairly new, and so it's really inky. All right, and we're gonna stamp this right up in the corner here. All right, hold on. I gotta bring it a little bit closer because it's too far away from me. All right, so we're gonna stamp it right here in the corner. Warm wishes. Okay, and then we're gonna close up our ink because we do not want to get it everywhere. I'm gonna clean off my stamp. I gotta push it in there pretty good because I got that ink, uh, I got it a little too inky today. All right, so there is our warm wishes. And I want my bear to kind of stick off the edge a little bit, but I want my tree to be flat down. All right, so I'm gonna take my tree and I'm gonna use my liquid glue a little around all the edges. I'm gonna leave a little spot, hopefully where I can hold on to this little tree. right there and I'm gonna line it up along the edge okay just like that all right and then I'm gonna turn my beer over and I'm gonna put some Stampin' Dimensionals on. All right, I'm gonna switch out for the little ones because I want a couple on his legs here and up by his head. Okay. So there is my little bear. And remember, I want them to be just off the edge a little bit. Warm wishes, all right. And then I think, hmm. Mm, what do we need? I think I need something. And I can't figure it out. Maybe a big bow, so we'll see. All right, there's our warm wishes. I do feel like maybe that needed to be a little bit different. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we're gonna do something different, but I will get to that in a moment. All right, we're gonna take Yep, 
Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to change it up, okay? So I'm going to take a little piece of this Naturals trim and I'm going to add this on. And I'm going to use a glue dot. So we're just going to add a glue dot to either end. I don't I don't always plan these cards out ahead of time. So sometimes um, when I'm designing as I go, you will get to see a little um, a little bit into my creative process. So things do never <laughs> almost never go the way that I initially plan them out. Now, like I said, with overcomplicating things, that's true in probably all the areas of my life. I do overcomplicate things. That's something I'm working on. And I also change my mind frequently. So in that, I'm, I'm probably not going to work on, I think, um, I think changing our minds is a good thing as we grow and change and learn new things. I think that we should change our minds. So that is not something, uh, that's on my mind to, to be worked on. All right. So now we need a new warm wishes, right? And what I have over here next to me is a little stash of die cuts. And we're going to pull out one of these. And on here, I'm going to restamp my warm wishes. Okay. So we're going to put it right in the center this time. And now I think it's too big. All right. What do you think? I think it should be smaller. Let me see if I have another size circle over here. And I don't have another one ready. All right, so we're gonna go with this big, we're gonna go with this big warm wishes. And we'll just add something to it here. All right, now, since I'm gonna put it up here in the corner, I want some Stampin' Dimensionals down here, but I also want some up here and over to the side. But since I already lifted this one up, it is too big, isn't it? All right, I'm gonna get a smaller one. I thought it was too big too, but I can use that warm wishes on something else later. All right, let me cut out a smaller one. Okay. I love these stylish shapes and I usually have a whole bunch of options right close by. But since I had my card class and I cleaned everything up, See, I think that's a much better size right there, don't you think? I'm gonna cut out one of those. So, 
since I cleaned everything up, it hasn't, it never gets back to where it belongs, I feel like. Well, I suppose eventually it does, or it finds a new place to belong. But, but it's not there yet. All right, so here, I uh, see, I think that's a much better size circle. And it'll fit over top of the one we just made. All right, let's get a new warm wishes here. And actually, since we're copying this card, I would like to cut out a second circle to go behind it. All right, and what I did with that first card was I cut out two that were the same size and I just offset them. So let's see. If we, let's see, which color? I think if we use this color behind it, that will be kind of fun. And I'll put something a little bit different in there. And I think we'll like that. So here's our second circle. We're just going to attach them together like this. So I just did a little swirly line on there. And I think we'll have this one kind of go the other way. So we'll have it kind of sit like this. All right. And then it's going to go right here. And now we don't have to worry about that second layer of dimensionals because this is just going to sit right here. All right. So we're going to take whoop, runaway dimensionals. All right. We're going to take one of the little ones and stick it up here at the top because that way I don't have to worry about where it is on my circle. And then... We'll put a big dimensional down here on the bottom. And now we can just put that right over top where we want it to go. I think that's so much better. We would not have been happy with that big circle. All right, so there is our first card. We just need some little sparkly gems, but isn't that cute? I really love that little bear and the tree and this whole paper. All right, let's get some gems. All right, and I'm, we're gonna use these iridescent rhinestones. I really like these. Um, they're probably my second favorite. I. I really love, I've always loved the basic rhinestones. That's my first favorite, just because it goes with everything. But these, these are a close second, I have to admit. And let's put a little sparkly one here at the top of our tree, even though we know that... This is not a Christmas tree out in the woods. Would not have a star at the top. But maybe one would be shining behind it. So let's do one more right there. Sometimes I really struggle with where to put these. 
little gems. Let's do one more right there. All right. Okay, so here is our first card for tonight. It didn't that turn out cute. I love the warm wishes saying. And I will I will finish it up later and I'll put a piece on the inside. I don't usually put any words on the inside because I like to write and I like having space to write whatever I want to on the inside. All right, and next we're gonna copy this card. So let me grab some white cardstock. Okay, and this piece is gonna be four and a quarter by 11. And I've already scored this one, but you're going to score it at five and a half. And then again at eight and a quarter. Okay. So then it'll fold up like this. Okay. So for our bottom piece, We are going to use this green. I need to measure just to be sure I got this right. And it's going to be four by two and a half. So two and a half by four. Okay, and that's going to go down here on the bottom. And then we're going to put this one up on the top. So again, we need two and a half. Okay, and that one's going to go up here on the top. Where should we switch them? I think they could go either way, really. Okay. No, I like I think I like them better this way. All right. Sometimes I struggle a little bit here. I guess that's obvious, isn't it? All right. So I couldn't fit, I can't I can't uh, decide on a different ribbon so I think what I'll do is use the same one all right so we're gonna take this ribbon again and trim it here
And we're going to put it along the top and wrap it around. Okay. Look like that. So we can put it up here on the top. And then what we're going to do is... This ribbon is a little different in that you can pull pieces of it off. So we're gonna take two little pieces out and we are gonna tie a little bow. Let's be careful not to let those little ends go through because I'm kind of trying to make a really small bow. Now we just need to trim our little bow. Sorry, I got kind of quiet there for a minute while I was tying. All right, and then we need a little more glue. And we're gonna stick that bow on right here. Okay, and then for our top part, we're gonna put some dimensionals on the back here. So I've got the little ones for up here at the top above our ribbon. And actually, I'm going to put one in the middle too, just because I don't want that part to cave in. And we'll put two here on the bottom. I'm watching too for your comments as we go along. All right, so we're gonna put this part up here on the top, in the center. Okay, and then this is gonna go on the, I really love those little trees too. Okay, but we're using our stripey side this time. So we're gonna put our liquid glue on again and go around. I meant to post another video last Wednesday, but I got so busy working on everything for my card class that I didn't get around to it. So I am sorry if you were waiting for that. Okay, so there's where we are so far. So now, let's do a little bit of stamping. So let's do some of our little bears here. <laughs> These are really stuck on tonight. Okay. So we're going to put this one on block D. All right, and I'm not going to close that up because we're going to we're going to put some more on there in just a minute. All right, and then we need a piece of basic white. Which is over here, and I'm just going to cut a smaller piece for uh, to stamp on. Okay. 
So now let's stamp our bear in early espresso. Or maybe crumb cake. Let's see. What do we think? Let's do... Let's do early espresso. Actually, let's uh, let's stamp him in black because maybe he's a polar bear and I can just have an outline here. Okay, so here is our memento black. And we're gonna stamp our first bear right down here in the corner. Okay, and let's see. I will have the perfect size. Okay. And then I'm actually going to turn this around. stamp the second bear over here. stamp our second bear right over here. Okay, and I'm going to punch this one out. easy that bear punch works. I love when a punch works really easy like that. Okay, so now I'm going to cut out this first bear. Let's see, and about two, two inches. Is that going to be enough? Two, let's go one and seven eighths. That's pretty close for that little bear. Okay. And then, let's see. We're going to want our second bear to be like this. So, we're going to cut this piece at... Four inches. Let's see, is that going to be too wide? No, it's going to be just fine. <laughs> I do talk to myself a lot. All right. So we want this little bear to be like this. We want this one to be like this. And then where are we going to put our words? Hmm. Okay. Let's put this one flat on there. All right, we, we got to keep going. Sometimes I can get stuck in the in the thought process, like how is it gonna go? How is it gonna turn out? And I find that when I'm feeling that way, sometimes it's better to just keep going, like keep going, just keep going. 
with the plan. Okay, so here is our first beer. And our second beer, we're gonna put on dimensionals. So let's get one on his legs. I say his, but I don't really know which bear is which, okay? Until I put a scarf on them or some other kind of, I don't know how to identify them. I guess they are who I choose they will be. All right, so there is my second bear. Oh, I kind of want them to be not quite so close. Can I move this little bear? Okay, so here is a kind of helpful hint. If you think that you might want to move your um, little pieces around once you put their dimensionals on, don't push them down too hard. And usually you can get them peeled back up. I really like that ribbon. It's, um, I like that it's not a specific color. So it kind of goes, it goes with everything. So that's what I was struggling a little bit with, with this, um, with figuring out what ribbon that I wanted up there. If I use this one, I feel like that's good. Okay, let's see. Now I need a piece for the inside. That's five and a quarter by four. Okay. And this, I know that, I know that this is a white card and um, a lot of the time you won't find a piece inside on a card that is white or that is light colored, but I like, um, I really like the sturdiness. I feel like it provides, if you put that extra piece of cardstock in there, I know it probably, it costs a little bit more to put an extra piece of paper in there but I like the feeling of it being a little more sturdy. Oh, I didn't get it quite in the center, but it's stuck a little faster than it usually does. At least it's white and hopefully no one will notice that. It's quite stuck down there. All right, so then down here, I am gonna put a, A little shape and I want to put that's where I want to put my Merry Christmas so this is probably one of the few times where you'll see me actually stamp something for the inside of the card I don't very often do that Okay, so here is our Merry Christmas. I really love these very Christmas, very cute Christmas stamps. All right, and now I need a piece of white, which I know I have a bunch of in my stash here. have so many little piles of extra um, scraps. I have been working on clearing some of them out, but I am not there yet. Okay, and we'll use black since we we use black for our bears. Okay, so here we're going to stamp. Our, you know what? I'm going to practice stamp because to me, it looks like I need to. And how I can usually tell is if when I'm looking at my stamp, let's see, I don't know if I can show you this 100%, but see on this side where it looks like there might be a little bubble or a place where my ink isn't sticking all the way. If I happen to notice that when I'm stamping, I'll stamp a couple times first. 
just to be sure that I'm going to get the image that I want to get. So I want my whole stamp to come through about the same. This isn't a distinctive stamp, so there shouldn't be that differentiation in where the ink where the ink comes out. So now if I go to stamp here on my scrap paper, I don't know if online if online you can see the difference, but there's definitely a difference between this Merry Christmas over here and my first three over on this side. So if you find that your stamp isn't stamping the way that you want it to, sometimes you have to try a couple different things to see um, what, what the problem is. Sometimes there's not a problem. Sometimes that's the way the stamp is meant to look. But uh, sometimes there is. So if you are a picky stamper, then you are going to want to test stamp probably more often than uh, other people do. And now I have to be even pickier because, because that feels that looks crooked to me. All right, I'm going to turn it around. I did not line up my stamp very well this time. And so I know it's not quite on my block straight. But I'm going to try and get my words straight anyways. That looks a little better to me. Okay, so that's just a little hint about your stamping. If you feel like there are um, little sp spots where your stamp isn't catching, stamp it a few times on your scrap paper until you get the image that you want. And the other thing that I sometimes do when my stamps are new is I take an eraser and I kind of erase along all of the lines and then I clean it off before I stamp with it. Sometimes I feel like there's a little something on there uh, from production or I don't know. I don't know exactly where it comes from. But sometimes when they're new, I find that it helps if I use an eraser on them before I stamp with them. Now that's for, that's probably a tip that's more helpful for picky stampers than uh, just for everybody. All right, and now we're gonna trim this down. So I'm gonna trim it to three inches. And this piece, I didn't measure it. It was in my scrap pile, but it's about three quarters of an inch. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our Stampin' Dimensionals to put on the back of this one. I have a little trash here beside me. I am not throwing all those little backings on the floor just in case you're wondering i do tend to find them all over my house but i never intentionally throw them on the floor okay so there is our there is our our stand-up card isn't that cute okay so this is what the card front will look like and you could decorate this too if you wanted to this is my um, original card that we copied. So this is our second card. Yeah, try the eraser thing. It really, it really does make a difference. Um, or the other thing you can do is sometimes um, before you stamp in a color, if you stamp um, a couple times in Versamark and then stamp and clean off your stamp. It does stamp differently than two, but I feel like the eraser thing works much faster than that. So, and you don't have to use any ink. You can just use, I always use a white eraser 
I don't know if it would matter if you used red rubber or I know some pencils have fancy green or purple er erasers. Um, you could use any of those. Okay, and now we're just uh, going to add a few more of these iridescent rhinestones. I say a few more, but I'm referring to the first card because we put a few on there. All right, and this time I'm going to put a couple up here at the top just because I feel like the top of this one needs a little more, a little more sparkle. There's three up there. Kind of like little stars, maybe. And then I'll put one down here. Um, well, I don't want to put it right there. I don't want it to look like it's coming out behind the bear. So I did second guess myself right there real quick. Okay, so we've got some little rhinestones. We've got our two polar bears. And then on the inside, our Merry Christmas. So there is our second card. And in case you didn't see it, here is the first one. And if you missed the beginning, I did show the cards from my last card class. Um, so you can go back and watch those, but I will show you again the cards for the next one because we're, it's going to be a Christmas card class and it's going to be lots of fun. So here is the first one and this um, features the Marion Bright stamp set, uh, dies, and the paper. And remember when you come to card class, I do die cut all of these um little pieces for you so that makes your um card making a little more fun and a little um easier so that you can chat and have good conversation while you're crafting okay here is the second one the third card and then our last one is going to be another fun fold so I did post a little video about this one earlier this week. I love this little fun fold card. So be sure to be watching for my email on Wednesday if you want to sign up for that class. The link to RSVP will be in there. Um, and you don't want to miss it. It really is a lot of fun. I keep it to only six people. And this time I have a morning option at 10 o'clock or an evening option at 6 o'clock. So, um, so that's for that. And I'm still preparing for um, the day after that, which would be the 18th is Saturday. From 10 to 2, I'm going to have a Christmas card buffet. So watch for the details in the email about that as well. I, I'm glad you like it. I really like that. I love to do fun folds. I love kind of uh, fussy stuff, but that one is not, it's not hard. It's really fun. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's card class and that I will see you soon. Until then, happy stamping!